Hello and welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. Today I'm here with Quinzel Duplass from uh, Kinderhands. Uh, you have six years of experience within the whiskey business. So yeah, quite some experience and you're now master of wood and liquid innovator at Kinderhands. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, so Thanks for having me. So what are you doing as a liquid innovator? <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a nice way to say um, blender of the company. Okay. But <clears throat> due to the heritage of uh, Kinnahans, they've always mm -hmm. innovated and they've always made a big thing about wood going back in the history of the company. So <clears throat> I am very passionate about wood and flavors and characteristics that you get from mm -hmm. wood and previous content. So when we decided what my title was going to be, um, mm -hmm. we thought of a bit of fun also and uh, <laughs> that that's how we came up with it. Okay, very nice, very nice. So you really enjoy wood then, huh? Yeah, <laughs> you I really do, I do enjoy wood. wood, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so Kinnahans, um, where does it come from or what is Kinnahans? <clears throat> so Kinnahans is a very, very old uh, Irish uh, product from 1779. Oh, okay. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, it's a company that um, has um, been revived again in 2014. Mm -hmm. But the roots go back uh, very far. Um, mm -hmm. They were basically the first innovators of whiskey as we know today. Mm -hmm. So in those days, um, either it was like moonshine or um, pochine. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were lucky if your whiskey was um, in a cask long enough to get more flavor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what they realized after many, many years before we had the rules of three years mm -hmm. in a cask to make whiskey, they realized that if whiskey was traveling far to like say America or somewhere else, that person would have better flavors and better uptake in the cask than what they did if they were just basically taking it down the road. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it wasn't as white anymore and had flavor and taste. So they started experimenting and basically in those days, a cask was only there to basically hold the liquid. There was no so it was plastic. A transport it was device. a transport vessel, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And they realized <laughs> after a while, hey, um, the flavor is a little bit different and it's getting better and uh, uh, this is not just a storage vessel, we can actually make it nice. And mm -hmm. the Kinnahan family was the pioneers of mm -hmm. that concept. Okay, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a risk to, to put so much capital into, into a cask and just store it there, isn't it? So it just it takes a bit of a... <laughs> it is, yeah. A bit yeah. of a, I don't know... In <laughs> risk, yeah, a bit of a courage to do that with, with a few yeah, casks. Yeah, yeah. So um, you come from Ireland. Where about in Ireland is that? Where, where so uh, where I located? live uh, in the Cooley Peninsula, which is quite a lot of uh, famous uh, for its whiskey. Um, there's also Great Northern Distillery in Dundalk, which is just mm -hmm. down the road from me. Cooley uh, is up the road from me also. Probably I live about five or ten kilometers. We have some warehouse space there, and we have uh, a few other warehouse spaces also on the island of Ireland. So the the Cooley that is on the east coast. <coughs> it's on the east north coast of east north Ireland, coast. the mm -hmm. furthest point of the Republic of Ireland. Okay, so that's like near Green Ore then. It is in Green okay. Ore, yeah, it's close. Mm -hmm. we, that's where we store all our case goods also. Mm -hmm. um, to export to the likes of yourselves. Ah, okay, so so green oil is where all, everything yeah. is going out. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, I've been there and uh, I've seen the big ships coming in, going out. Yeah, so, yeah it's it's a lovely place. So, uh, yeah, what are we having today? What's the first whiskey we're going to try? So, I, I want us to start with uh, the more um, pricier um, product today, which is a 10-year-old malt. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go on to the small batch blend mm -hmm. and then we're going to go on to the cask. They're all phenomenal products, and as we work through them, you'll see why I've chosen to start with mm -hmm. the most expensive product today. Uh, most people mm -hmm. would normally go the other way around, mm -hmm. as you know. Okay. So uh, I, I don't know if you want to start pouring or. Oh, you, you just can you can pour it for us. Okay. So this is a ten-year-old um, malt, uh, and this is part of the heritage range. So it's mm -hmm. traditional. Uh, bourbon finished uh, malt whiskey mm -hmm. um, and it's matured in a bourbon cask from day one till it's bottled. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a uh, 46 proof uh, percent? It's, it's 46 proof, 46 percent, mm -hmm. non-chill filtered, mm -hmm. uh, no coloring, all natural and uh, you'll soon smell why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, so what are we having in there? What, what do you smell? 
there's there's obviously a lot of vanilla notes in it um, from the bourbon cask, but you'll also get um, bit of chocolate. There's a good mm -hmm. bit of bit of chocolate in it, and <clears throat> once you get a chance to taste it, you'll actually see, although it's forty six percent, it's extremely smooth. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of um, a bit of lemon, bit of orange peel. Mm -hmm. What do you think? It got a, a good amount of a, like a, a bourbon style. Definitely, mm -hmm. you can you can smell that is bourbon maturation yeah. in there. I love it. It's it's lightly sweet with that fresh ta touch with a bit of a little bit of a citric. Not a little bit. There is a good amount of citric uh, flavor in there, like like lemons or uh, not quite sure. But um, yeah, I like it. It's a uh, it's refreshing. I would say it's. Uh, so that citric, mm -hmm. that citric, and that sort of sourness is what you get from the bitter chocolate, mm -hmm. brown chocolate. It's different to yeah. Now, now you if you if you get a bit into deeper, if you mm. get accustomed to it, then you get the chocolate. I think. But but it's very gentle. Mm -hmm. It's gentle. Very it's gentle. Before you before you taste it, you can actually taste it's going to be smooth. Mm -hmm. You get have to be, get a bit accustomed to it to get. Uh, it, it is different. It's very different. Yeah. yeah, it is very different. <coughs> mm -hmm. So when I say ten year old, it's not all ten year old. Some of it is older than ten. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the youngest is ten, um, but mm -hmm. mm. okay. Start share. Mm. It is very gentle for forty six. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. The slight bitterness from the dark chocolate flavor, but mm -hmm. it's still, it's very smooth and, and easy on the mouth. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, when you have it in your mouth, it's easy. When you do swallow it, you do have a lot of flavor in there as well. Mm. I love it. But it's, it's different from the smell. It if, is. If, <clears throat> if I would have imagined it to um, like the smell, then I would have gone with um, more fruity, more... Uh, lighter now I do have more of the the oaky tones and the chocolate is really coming through There's mm -hmm. a smooth honey syrupy kind of nurse that you mm -hmm. get when you smell it floral Yeah, and then when you taste it you get that bitter chocolate, mm -hmm. but it's nice bitter chocolate It's a kind mm -hmm. of bitter chocolate you get when you're an older person that you yeah. like that you don't like is when you're a child mm -hmm. when, when you the, the finish is that comes in a bit of the sweetness again it does yeah yeah, but but um, when you just have in your mouth you're overwhelmed with the with the the intensity with the wood and the uh, the chocolatey, um, a bit of sweet chocolate types. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. mm. So it's ten years, ten years old, uh, forty six percent ABV, unchill filtered. Yes, I like all it. our products are non chill filtered. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Good. So. Um, you mentioned 1779. Yes. So, yes. Um, how much of the heritage is left? How 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 do you connect to your history? Um, we are still in touch with the family of the owners, and we've kept in touch with them uh, with certain aspects of the company. Although we own the brand and we bought the brand out, mm -hmm. um, we we are still trying to keep our heritage side of the company. And people say yes. Um, you're not the same old company and it's not the same age, it's not the same product. Well, we're not trying to say that. <laughs> okay. And that's why we've got the heritage range to try and keep traditional to the mm -hmm. old style of whiskey with cask, um, wooden, straight bourbon kind of finish. But also some of our heritage dates back to um, like 1860 where there was uh, somebody trying to use our brand name passing off Okay, <clears throat> and they're basically trying to make their own whiskey because of the success of Kinnahan's. They started realizing if they put some whiskey in a bottle and put the label on, they, it's the same now where you buy products and <laughs> people buy fake products, handbags, okay. and watches and things. So these court cases dating back to the 1860s in Ireland, and lots of drink companies have used that since mm -hmm. to use it as a precedent case when they quote law to say. <laughs> This is why you cannot use our product because you did this and this as established in Kinnahan's versus so and so in 18 something in the Dublin courts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, law should be continuous. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and some of the other um, 
great uh, heritage that we also have is Jerry Thomas. Uh, he was one of the most famous uh, bartenders. He wrote the uh, Barman's Guide. I've read, I've read his name in there. Yes, yes. Jerry Thomas since <coughs> 1862. Yes. So Jerry Thomas would actually, if you look at all these uh, books from 18, I think some of them started in the 1860s and they were reprinted for many years. And mm -hmm. I think the second edition, maybe 1870 or something like that. He uh, even says, I prefer uh, if I have a Kinnahan's because the <laughs> whiskey has matured longer and smoother than others. Mm -hmm. Not not to break any brands down, but uh, <laughs> that's that's what he says in his cocktail book. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah. So where do you get the whiskey from? The <clears throat> Because we don't claim to be a distillery, mm -hmm. we um, source our whiskey from third parties. So there's mm -hmm. a few different uh, well-established distilleries that we buy our products from. We have some old sourced uh, whiskey, hence the 10-year-old the malt. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have some younger sourced stuff and we're constantly laying down casks as we speak. But we don't profess to have a distillery. Mm -hmm. And that's our um, heritage where we are um, whiskey makers mm -hmm. so we go into wood and we go very deep into wood about mm -hmm. getting the flavor derived marrying the spirit with the the cast the wood mm -hmm. and and giving somebody a total different product to what another person down the road can make mm -hmm. to what we make um, so yes we are whiskey makers mm -hmm. but wood is uh, yeah it's 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 a difficult business isn't it, uh, it is, because yeah. Uh, not everybody can do it because you, you have to source the wood, you have to know what to get, what wood, and uh, how it influences. So where do you get your casks from? How do you? So we we um, we've sourced a a, 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 a cooperage, and uh, we probably say that uh, we call them our cooperage, but they're not. <laughs> they they are third party agent of ours, and uh, we very much uh, hands on with them. I would have actually chosen a lot of the wood. I would have gone and visited them, mm -hmm. uh, established relationships with them, um, spoke to them about certain woods, um, mm -hmm. and done a bit of research and development, and mm -hmm. um, basically um, sourcing all, all the custom uh, cask mm -hmm. from them with our own uh, um, spec on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so that's that's pretty much all you do isn't it like the focusing on the wood and yes. how it affects the whiskey <clears throat> yes okay yeah but that's a, a really really big thing in the whiskey industry isn't it it is um, you know um, a lot of people talk about the um, yeast and the water and all that and um, I don't take away from anybody that does uh, great distillation and great recipes and all all that but we let them do that and then we buy very mm -hmm. good, we source very good spirit and then we put our signature on it by basically wood finishing it. Yep. And um, Yeah, it's always said that you have 30% of uh, production and then you have 60-70% of uh, maturation yes. uh, influencing the, uh, the whiskey and the flavor. Um, so yeah, you, you're going for the big chunk yeah, then. <laughs> yeah, well, I would um, disagree and I'd want to push it higher because <laughs> because all whiskey is made so, all spirit is made so well today. Mm -hmm. All the stills are so uh, well engineered. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that, that threshold has changed a bit mm -hmm. um, with all the great standards that there is out there. So mm -hmm. all the spirit is good, but can everybody make good whiskey? That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a, a really good question. So let's try the next one. Yeah. What, what are we having there? So this is the small batch blend. Mm -hmm. um, it's again part of the heritage uh, range. Mm -hmm. And it's a um, it's first and second fill uh, grain bourbon casks, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the malt component is um, aged malts, um, some of it up to nearly 10 years old. Okay. Um, which gives it a great... Um, mm -hmm. Okay, nice. So it's and also 46%. Also 46%. <laughs> non chill filtered. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd like you to nose it and tell me what you think of it. Mm -hmm. Again, it's very gentle. Where you had the floral sort of sweetiness on that, mm -hmm. you're going to get it more coming through on this. Mm -hmm. But you're going to get a surprise when you taste it to the mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think this one is a bit more fresher. Yes. I do get... Um, a few of the flowers in there, but what? I don't know what lilies or I don't know flowers. <laughs> Still with flowers, but there's there's a it's it's a light one, I would say. 
It's not one it's of these gentle. Uh, gentle. Yeah, it's yeah. a gentle light one. Yeah. Fruity. But fruity and, and flowery. There is a good amount of sweetness as well. It's very sweet, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I would say it's quite peachy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> that sweetness from the peach when it's been in the sun mm -hmm. for a while before it nearly becomes a dried fruit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can smell the cereals in it, but when you taste it, you're going to taste the difference. Mm -hmm. They'll, that sweetiness will come through. It's interesting. Uh, usually, uh, I, I feel um, you get faster into a whiskey. Yours takes a bit of time to, to get accustomed to it and find something out. Because now that I have my nose deeper in, then, then it, it gets more complex. It opens up. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. I find that one more gently. <coughs> it's very gentle, very smooth. Very gentle. Yes. Um, oh, uh, you do have a, an American influence as well again. The sweeteners, a little bit of popcorn in there, a little bit of a caramel flavor. Mm. And, and, and get the creaminess on it. Creaminess, yeah. And, mm. and yeah, caramel, cream, like a, like a bit of a... Peaches and cream. Mm. Candy, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Candy. The sweetness from the peach. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, and and fruitiness. But this one is a this one's a bit drier than it the is cereal. The cereal coming cereal. through. Mm -hmm. It's where the other one was sticky in mm. the in the finish. This one is a bit drier and um, but also with a bit of sweetness. But this one within the finish was more sticky. This one is a uh, drier with cereals. Yeah, definitely. Mm, I like it. I like it. Nice so it has 46% ABV. Yeah, it doesn't feel like that. Yeah, that really is yeah. really is a smoother one. Yeah. Although it opens up when it comes in your mouth, it's mm -hmm. still the gentleness of 40%, mm -hmm. but the flavors of a much higher mm -hmm. percentage whiskey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the 46% the ABV because it, the 40% ABV can sometimes feel a bit watery and the uh, 51s can be always a bit Tough, Tough and, yeah. uh, and the 46 is just always that, um, that sweet spot. <laughs> it is, yeah. All right, you yeah. have to eat the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. There's certain products that you can go higher or lower, mm -hmm. but you have to eat the sweet spot on it. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you want to get one of these products, uh, where can you sell them? Uh, where can you uh, buy them? Not sell so them. <laughs> all three of these products are available in about 24 countries, probably up to now, mm -hmm. and counting. The main markets is... Uh, America, obviously, Germany, like yourselves, mm -hmm. Italy, the Netherlands, France, Russia, mm -hmm. some in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. uh, Australia will be coming online soon, okay. Poland, um, Canada, Britain. Canada is actually taking some also. Britain, yeah, sorry, okay. I forgot about Britain. <laughs> and uh, although they Brexiting, we're still sending them whiskey. <laughs> you're still sending them yeah, whiskey, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You're not letting them dry no, out. No, oh, no, like we have to help them, you know. <laughs> okay. um, so there's not a total divorce, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure, they, it's, still, it's still one region. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, nice. Um, so these are like your, your her what was it? Heritage, heritage, heritage range, range the yeah. The, these are always available? <coughs> they would be, yeah, yeah, they mm -hmm. would be. Now, they're obviously a little bit more pricey, yeah, but mm -hmm. uh, it goes, like I said, it goes from uh, most expensive down to the to the cheaper uh, mm -hmm. line. Um, but in all um, categories, they hold their own. Uh, we just mm -hmm. won um, San Francisco Gold, and um, we're constantly winning things um, all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, but so it's, what, what is new about your company? Is there anything? <coughs> so what's new is um, we're developing a, a few new products. And we've actually, this is one of our new products that we've developed mm -hmm. uh, recently. You've read a bit, a bit about that. Yeah. It's a bit special. So yeah, it's, it's, tell, it's, tell me about the background. Yeah. About so it. we've got it. Uh, I don't know if the, the readers can see there. I'm actually going to okay. show the back. It'll okay. probably be easier. You can see yeah, it at the back. The back, you can see it easier. And so it's cask spelled the wrong way around, K-A-S-C. Okay. And if you go look at some of our publicity shots, you'll actually see the thing is reversing and it spells it out for you <laughs> okay. how it's gone. So the cask is, we hit the sweet spot at 43%. Okay. Okay. We were looking at what percentage to set it at. Mm -hmm. 
And like you say, on these, well, it was 46. Mm -hmm. Now, it's still non chill filtered, but I was messing around a lot with it because I wanted to have a product that's a little bit different mm -hmm. in many ways. And we call it a riot of wood. A riot of wood. Yeah, okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And somebody has described it as uh, a, um, a, a riot in a, a, a Marrakesh food market. <laughs> because of all the different flavors and all the different smells and things okay. that you get, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's it's basically five different staves, okay? We've built a cask, okay, which we okay. call a hybrid cask, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Now, it's quite unusual. It's not the kind of thing that have been done before. Now, people have built mm -hmm. casks with various components and things, but we've actually built a whole cask with five components, okay? Mm -hmm. So our staves that goes around, a staves consist of something like 30 to 33 staves to make mm -hmm. up a cask, okay? And depending on how big each different stave is, the, the, the less or more staves you'll have, okay? Mm -hmm. So the five staves make up American, French, Hungarian, Portuguese, four types of oak, okay? Okay. And then the fifth one is chestnut. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so you have a cask that is made of Staves from all of these yes, yes. things, <coughs> plus yeah. the chestnut. Yes. And but that is airtight. Yeah, oh yeah. It was. They looked at me and said, are you mad? The crew person. And I, I said, <laughs> oh, okay. Well. I, I said, it can be done. I said, it's hard. I said, I know, blah, blah, blah. But uh, it, it, it's been done. It's been done. It's been and done. And the flavors will speak for itself. You'll taste the flavors now. And uh, mm -hmm. it wasn't easy. It takes about five hours to build a cask. Mm -hmm. So people are asking me, was the Portuguese one um, Porto? Was it this? Was the Hungarian one this? Was the American bourbon? I'm not going to tell you because it's my <laughs> recipe. But they are all constructed together. And how many of this stave do you use? And how many of that stave? <laughs> I'm not telling you. It's part yeah, it's, of my recipe also. So, so basically what you did is usually you go for, you have different casts and then you do blending. <clears throat> yes, yes. So what you did is you blended the wood. Yes, yes, because uh, because I want to be just make it easy instead of having too many. So some people said, oh, it's not going to work. You're not going to be consistency, all this sort of stuff. I'm going to maintain probably 95% consistency. Mm -hmm. And if there's a problem, I can change my blend or I can adjust it or amend it. I'm constantly checking mm -hmm. my casks. Um, but we are a craft kind of wood experimental whiskey company mm -hmm. so my stuff is never going to look the same on the shelf one product to the next mm -hmm. the taste profile is going to be there mm -hmm. but i'm never going to say that it's going to taste 100 percent the same mm -hmm. although the profile will be the same mm -hmm. and if you look at the color that's naturally derived no caramel ah uh, so you're going to be <coughs> different yes, on the shelf yes, yeah but it's yes. nice to have natural and because color. this is germany mm -hmm. if it was caramel it would have had to say on your caramel yeah sure we, yeah. we always have to say that yeah yeah um, so I'm really excited. I, I love that. That's what I love about the whiskey industry. You think about, oh, it's so traditional and they're all doing the same since 17, whatever. Uh, but the, the, the regulations is quite, quite stringent and it ensures the quality. But you can do stuff like that with the gas and it's just, <laughs> that's just really cool. It's, it's wood <laughs> and it's yeah. the same as traditional whiskey. Yeah, it's just you just use a different finish or a different uh, type of oak. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, love it. So that's what I love about the, the whiskey industry. There are always people thinking about it. Uh, what can we do differently and, and is it going to be good? <laughs> yeah, well, there was a bit of uh, research and development and a lot of stress to make Make sure it was right come launch time but uh, um, yeah so I want to see if yeah you let's have a try yeah, I'm really try. excited now yeah. <laughs> cool <laughs> a cast with different kind of staves uh, the chestnut was that's really really <coughs> chestnut <laughs> chestnut is a very fast maturing wood yeah mm -hmm. so I have concerns that my whiskey might mature fast uh, it might evaporate more because it's more of a loss mm -hmm. on the chestnut but I've been monitoring it and because the staves are mixed, that's been one of the reasons why I probably haven't had such bad lasses. Do, do they look funny, the casks? It looks very awkward and funny, yeah. <laughs> but when I have it finished in the cooperage, they sand it up and they clean it up for me. Oh, okay. We have some publicity shots on our um, blogs and our things. You can see some of them mm -hmm. and they look like really, uh, we call them Frankenstein between <laughs> us. Uh, in, in our company internally, we say they look like Frankenstein-y. 
but uh, because it's all bits and bobs that'll be made up <laughs> but uh we clean it up and you can see it just looks nice you know okay nice um, cool cool uh, that's really cool i would have had uh, a bit of a worry about the different hardness of the wood because <coughs> isn't oak a really hard wood and chestnut a bit uh, yeah you know, yeah but if you if you manage your cask well and you don't they're not <laughs> a bourbon is very strong American bourbon is very strong and they're so very roll, don't roll them around all day well yeah don't put <laughs> them around the face you know okay but, uh, <laughs> cheers oh did you get that you see that straight away <sighs> okay that's really that's really a something so but it's it's much more deep yes it's the, the other ones are a bit more you know fresh flowery citrus and that kind of stuff This one is deep with... Uh, Do you smell that sort of like burny, kind of caramelized sugar? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's deep with uh, more fruitiness, but in a like apple, red apple way, some, some dry fruit even. Yes. And yeah, a bit of a, I don't know, is that tropical fruit or is that like... <coughs> so it's so, a sort of like figs. Mm -hmm. um, mangoes, caramelized mangoes, and then think of your Christmas cake that you have around mm -hmm. Germany in in Christmas. Mm -hmm. Smell that yeah, caramel. Definitely, definitely. But I also do have Fruitiness. a bit of a a bit of a. Is that? Not quite sure if it's very ripe banana, ri very ripe pineapple, some something <coughs> a bit. I call it caramelized pineapple. So mm -hmm. it's if you take a pineapple and you put it on a barbecue and you cook it. And it <laughs> starts getting that. all sticky, and, it's, and it starts getting all sticky, yeah. And then you put it on a plate, and all that sugar comes out, and it's like syrup. It's uh -huh. like the syrup from a pancake, yeah. Bit of a pancake syrup, yeah, 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 yeah definitely, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the idea. Of, I have to do that one time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But there's so much coming out, and that's yeah, why it's, it's, it's a riot of wood. It's not just a riot of wood; it's a riot mm -hmm. of flavors also. Yeah, right. Yeah, riot of wood comes from. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 I would say it's um, more intense. Yes. I have much more flavor in there. It's still, it's not attacking on you, but the flavor is just... Um, I wouldn't say overwhelming, but you have a lot of flavor in your mouth. It's uh, it's all you've had in your mouth, but a little bit differently, just mixed up a bit. Mm -hmm. So now you understand why I finished off with this. Yeah, sure. It would Because this is a phenomenal <laughs> 10 year old malt, mm -hmm. but I wanted to go all the way down this way because mm -hmm. I wanted to leave this for last. This is a more of a more of a, a mallet and this is more of a like yeah. i don't know this precision. is for, this is where you sit on your uh, leather couch mm -hmm. when you want to have a nice drink of your big glass and you just want to relax and this is for any time and that's for any time <laughs> really really that that i would have said this this one these ones are like sipping gently nicely and you can okay they are they're a bit more sophisticated as yes. well and you can you can find something in there and this is a bit more stronger than when you when you sit down and say oh come on this day was just a bit hard let's give me something something yeah, yeah. flavorful i want to have something that i feel in my mouth <laughs> but but you can soup this as much as what you can put into cocktails also mm -hmm. this this would be interesting if you have a few glasses of that if that is then <laughs> becoming overwhelming no the problem is that it's too easy to um To drink yeah and it, i don't think you will will be there like oh i can't drink but it's gonna be if you have a few glasses mm. of it if if your mouth is gonna be okay uh, over <laughs> over what do you call it um there's the 10 year old mm -hmm. and there's the cask yeah oh mm -hmm. so uh how long was it in there then do you say <coughs> that is there anything about it's an age statement mm -hmm. um so we don't it's a mixture of all it's a mixture younger. of all the young, yeah. <laughs> okay yeah so three plus <laughs> yes yes mm. well i like it it's it definitely is something different it is very different it is it? different yeah. Uh, yeah i would have said okay you could have uh, met, have that with blending but not quite sure it's it's a nice one i like it it's 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 mm -hmm. it's different but it's still <laughs> nice drinkable whiskey mm -hmm. yeah it's 
It's nice drinking whiskey, definitely, definitely. I like it. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm excited about what, what you think of next because uh, mm. <laughs> I've seen a lot of stuff with people like, let's do it that way and let's do it that way. <clears throat> uh, a lot of things. And, and then when I've read the cask project, it's like, seriously? <laughs> yeah, well, some people <laughs> thought I was mad. When they, uh, yeah, it's, but just, you know, it's so. just so cool. It's just really cool. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so... Thank you very much for the introduction of the all the whiskies. I think uh, sometime in the future I will visit you in, yes, in Ireland. Nice. Definitely. Be nice. Definitely. Be nice. Definitely. So, yeah. Thank you very much. And, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, you can find these uh, whiskies uh, in all the regions uh, you've told us before. Have a look. Um, I think they're really great. Um, my favorite, I have to say, Cast Project. Thank you. Thank I you. really love that. Is that already available everywhere? It is, yeah. We actually launched it in uh, Germany uh, mm -hmm. on Paddy's weekend mm -hmm. in um, Dusseldorf. Ah, okay. So watch out for that one. That is just yeah. cool. You have a, a yeah. really nice Cast Project. And it was actually, uh, it was some experience. <laughs> we launched it on a boat on the Rhine. <laughs> Ooh. yeah it was phenomenal so uh, I, I i will never forget that <laughs> okay that day yeah so watch out for for the kinahans whiskey thank you very much for watching if you found this video interesting then please feel free to share it with your friends and see you next time